We have with us this afternoon Mr. Chris Malikowski, UF Distinguished Alumnus and co-founder of NVIDIA. Thank you for being here this afternoon, Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. What are the characteristics of a great leader? Well, the um, le leadership comes uh, is a byproduct uh, somewhat of respect uh, of that somebody is willing to listen to what you have to say or, or follow your guidance. Um, I think you know the, the best leaders that I know um, have a plan, have a vision. They're not not even if it's seat of the pants, it doesn't come across that way. They have um, an unquestioned commitment to the goal. Um, that they are more concerned with the objective and the care and feeding and. Uh, accomplishments of the folks they're trying to lead than in their own rewards or, or accomplishments. Um, and, and they inevitably have an amazing objectivity in that they, they don't get lost in the, in the forest. They, they know it's a forest, they know their trees, that they have the ability to step back and assess and change course and, and have uh, you know, the, the backbone to admit they're wrong. And I think that all then feeds the ability of somebody to be respectful of somebody who's, who's trying to accomplish you know, a noble goal, let's assume it's noble. Um, and, and, and then it's sort of a self-feeding process. Um, I also think the more effective leaders I know are also all, you know, and I, I, I grab a term I read in a Meg Whitman's book, um, bias to action. I think good leaders are biased to do something that sitting by is not generally the preferred uh, uh, course of action. That you know, you gotta try when you might fail, but you gotta try, you gotta make progress towards the end result and, and you know, learn as you go. You know, not everything is done with, with complete uh, knowledge. You know, hindsight is brilliant, but <laughs> when you're in the, in the moment, you, you may or may not have all, all the data. But I think a, you know, a good leader is, is more willing to move forward and adjust course than to, to do otherwise. What are the greatest challenges you've faced as a leader? Well, you know, some of them are personal. You know, the uh, doing, doing things and being um, in, in front of people taking charge, you know, for a lot of people in my, in my case, certainly early on in my career was a lot less comfortable. Um, but I also, you know, committed myself to succeed. Didn't know what that meant and didn't know how I was going to get there, but if that meant, you know, just sort of uh, taking some, some control or, 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 or asserting myself in the direction I think, you know, myself or the team should go, um, I, I found it worthwhile, you know, fighting my own demons to, to, to move forward with that. Um, I, you know, there's also, with leadership, is a responsibility. And, I, and another attribute of good leadership, I think they take unambiguous responsibility for, for um, certainly for a bad outcome, and then are glorious in sharing the responsibility for a good outcome. But owning up, you know, taking, look, I'm gonna assert myself here, and, and that means that failure is a possibility, and I'm gonna, you know, own up to it, and, and you know, and treat it appropriately, and not hide from it. Um, and taking responsibility for things that are, are often not going well, the outcome is uncertain, um, have high likely, high, you know, equal likelihood of failure or success. I mean, it's also something that takes a, a little bit of a uh, little bit of stomach to, to get comfortable with. You know, so those, those have been things. And, and you know, pers also with leadership comes a lot of personality issues and personnel issues which where I'm a technologist, I'm much more comfortable dealing with, with numbers or, or technical uh, parameters or you know, yields or you know, anything related to, to, to the products. Uh, personality, personnel issues are, are a little bit different and, and you know, it's another one of those things where it's not always comfortable and it's not always pleasant, um, but it goes with the territory. How did your engineering education prepare you for leadership? Well, that's a, it's a great question. The, I believe what I got out of my engineering education was a broad foundation 
of, of information and information that transcended just knowledge, but also on how to think, how to assess information, how to draw from data uh, the, 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 relevant, the relevant learnings. Um, I, I got exposed to a lot of disciplines. I got exposed to a lot of problems. I was able to fail, try and fail, and guess what? I got to pick myself up and try it again and, and, and find a better way. I learned to, to work with students, you know, other, other people who, who are not necessarily equally, you know, motivated by the same things or at the same stage of their learning, and, and we had to make that work. Um, I learned to work within, it, within an infrastructure and where to seek out information and how to be responsible for my own, my own outcomes not, and not use obstacles as, as, a, as, a, as a crutch. Um, you know, and I, you know, in the end, I, I came out knowing how to think, and knowing how to pursue information, and knowing how to, you know, uh, having having the, the basis to start forming, you know, valid judgments. And uh, when you when you enter industry in whatever profession you choose, I think it's 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 very likely has nothing directly to do with something you were taught. I mean, whatever challenges you have, but it's it, it's related. And it, you know, it has a similar foundation, a similar basis. And you need to, to as, a, as a young professional, to be able to draw from what you know and go apply it and solve tomorrow's problem. That's what's interesting. And, and I, my education, certainly here at Florida, clearly prepared me for that because I felt you know, very comfortable taking on challenges of things I only peripherally knew about. And I, I, you know, I owe that to my parents and I owe it to my, my, my schooling and my professors. Terrific. What other methods of leadership development were important to your growth as a leader? Well, certainly, I, well, I shouldn't say certainly. I, I never took leadership classes. I never took management classes. And, and I find myself in, later in my career as, as, as a serious manager of a, of a large company with lots of people and lots of responsibilities. Um, I learned and, and acquired the skills very likely, I mean, maybe some of it was innate, but I can't say that, by watching others, by, by finding role models and, and surrounding myself with people that I respected, that, that, you know, and following, you know, getting in the shadow of, of people that I respected. So I learned a lot from, from my mentors and, and finding the appropriate mentors, I think, is, a, is an important part of growth. Um, as we've discussed uh, privately, I also became a pilot, and I found that a lot of the uh, attributes and wisdoms and techniques that are used to teach uh, um, non-pilots to become a pilot and to, to, to practice that, that trade safely and, and, uh, and effectively translate into the business world and, and have helped sort of hone some of the skills and some of the uh, attributes of leadership that I like to hold out in my own uh, behavior. What advice would you give to students who want to become great leaders? Well, this, this it's another interesting question. There's no one I know who's either been a great success in business or in life or, or that I hold out in my own mind as a great leader that set out to be either successful or a great leader. Um, so, you know, life happens. And you know, there's a, there's a saying about luck. Hap, you know, luck comes to the prepared. I, I think great leaders. You know, part of the great leadership, but also comes from a self confidence, and self confidence comes from knowledge and experience. Um, so I would advise folks to go out, get a broad education. No, no matter how deep you want to get in some topic, don't deny yourself breath. So get breath, and not only in education but in experience. There's really no role related to something you're interested in that you shouldn't be willing to try, to learn from, to, to experience. There's another piloting saying that um, uh, experience leads to good decisions, but bad decisions leads to experience. So do something. I mean, don't, don't sit home and, 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 and think about what, what, what life's going to do for you and how you're going to take charge and do things. Go out and try it. Go experience it. Go get feedback. Go try you know, taking charge of something and, you know, setting a direction and seeing how the feedback, see how, are people willing to follow you or 
Are you effective in your leadership? What, what could be better? What is somebody doing that's better than what you're doing? You know, be self-critical. Um, so, so my advice to folks, and I, I tell this often, you know, what, is get a broad education, get, get involved, do something, and, and, and see where it takes you. So, uh, you know, you're, if you're gonna be a great leader, you're gonna have, you know, a whole experience base and, and knowledge base and, and, and judgment based to work from, well, you better get it somewhere. I mean, it's, it, who knows how many people get that innately. The rest of us have to work for it. Great advice. What can universities do to support leadership development? Well, you know, as, as I understand the university is doing, you're actually going to focus on it. Um, so that's got to help. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, some introduction and some formalism around the topic would be great. I and mean, it's very often in industry, you know, people get promoted based on accomplishment that doesn't in any way say that they are going to be good with people skills, that they're going to be good with, with, with uh, planning or, 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 uh, or, or, you know, any of the myriad of other things that go into to, uh, leading, leading people. In a, I'm in a technical field, so technical leadership is the part that, you know, I know best. Um, so, you know, talking about it, understanding the parameters, asking questions, you know, interviewing folks, like I said, I think, you know, that there's a great, great uh, um, opportunity to learn from what other people have done. And you know, they've already done the trials and tribulations, and so you can focus in on what, what's worked for them. Um, I, I think you know, focusing on inter interdisciplinary uh, studies and projects where you, people get out of their comfort zone, where they're a team player, not the sole, you know, uh, uh, the sole practitioner of whatever it is they're trying to do. Um, you know, leadership, a leader of one is not much of a leader, right? So leadership is a team sport. And uh, you, be, you, know, you better learn how to play with a team. And to be a team member as well. I mean, and there's also no leader I know that's a leader all the time. Very often you're a member of a team of somebody else's leadership, you know, you know packed influence under their influence and not yourself. And you need to be able to play on both sides of that fence. Um, you know, I think, you know, from a, from a school point of view, focusing not only on accomplishment, accomplish, straight accomplishment, but how you accomplish it. Doing it with honor and integrity. Um, doing it, you know, showing th those you're competing against, you know, some dignity and respect. Um, and, you know, trying to, to create the circumstances where the, what you, how you choose to play the game and how you choose to pursue the path matters because that's a lot of leadership is judgment and you got to figure out how to get from here to there and get other people to want to go from here to there and having the experience and opportunity to try it in a, in a protected environment where the, where, the, where the repercussions are not, you know, uh, you know, somebody goes hungry or somebody gets hurt or, you know, it, it, it is wonderful. It's a wonderful environment and a laboratory for learning and I think universities particularly can play a big part of that for people that are just about to enter the workforce um, and, it, you know, they're ripe. How has globalization impacted leadership? Well, if I go back to my initial premise that, that part of leadership is having the respect of the folks that, that are hopefully being influenced by you, um, if you don't have a global sensibility, if you don't have a respect for those that you're about to lead, or hoping to, to, to influence, um, I think you know, you're not gonna be all that successful. Um, globalization has brought with it you know, uh, all sorts of, of, of new challenges. Understanding cultural sensitivities, understanding language and communication barriers and sensitivities, um, understanding economic you know, uh, parameters of, of doing business in one place or another or hiring in one place or another. Um, you know, the, uh, the, it just came with a host of challenges of which there's no way to solve it if your head's in the, in the sand. So this is another one of those. You've got to learn. You've got to get involved. You've got to develop the sense yourself if you're going to try to guide other people through it. So I, th I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's raised the level of the, uh, of the game, you know, no matter what industry or, or role you have. If, as soon as you're in, involved in uh, interacting with, with, with parameters that are outside of your norm, you, you know, you really need to learn and get 
and get some, some feeling for what it is you're up against. And I think globalization has brought that in spades to just a lot of industries. And, you know, it's, I think, you know, the world's been a little klutzy. Mm -hmm. You know, and in America, we're the, you know, it turns out a lot of other countries have a lot more international sensitivities than, than we do, frankly. You know, and, and, you know, we can't go in like the big bear and, you know, dictate things. And, you know, it just, you just fall flat on your face. You make mistake after mistake. So uh, I think it's a challenge for leadership. I think it's a challenge for, for businesses that don't have a history or, or you know, a, an understanding. And uh, it's a great chance for leadership to show their, show their value. What key events or people were instrumental in putting you on the path to leadership? Well, you know, I, you know, I think like most things, uh, it starts with my parents. And, you know, my parents were, were educated, outspoken, uh, professionals in their own right um, and walk you know like there was a little saying about you know uh, walk softly but carry a big stick I mean my father was the most soft-spoken under under um, would never sell his own merits yet was so confident and was was so brilliant and so well respected that you know when even when he mumbled people were paying attention and I, I learned something from that. You know, I'm a, I'm a lot more outspoken <laughs> than he was. But, um, but I, I, I came to realize that, you know, you can influence people and you can have an effect and you don't have to be a big grumpy bear and you don't have to carry a big stick. And you can, you can influence by, by leadership, or by, by, uh, by influence, by example. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of it started you know, with my parents and, and their generation of folks who, who I just ended up having great respect for my grandparents and so forth. Um, when I was in school, there was a number of professors who, again, were, were sort of the quietly brilliant and quietly influential without being overt about it, without throwing it in my face, but, I, but they became mentors and how they carried themselves and how they were willing to share what they knew. You know, and, you know, it seemed like, you know, a reasonably thankless job, frankly. And yet, here they were giving back, and that giving back was important to them, and I learned from that. When I entered industry, um, you know, I quickly found a few folks in, in the organization. They actually turned out not to be in my organization. And I just, you know, I was fascinated by, by how they worked and how they influenced people and how they pushed their agenda forward without pushing it in somebody's face and how they overcame the adversities, you know, the different challenges that came up. And, you know, and, I, and then I, you know, I, I, from a lot of respects, consider myself somewhat of a chameleon. I, I sort of pick up the attributes of things I like. And, and as I move forward, then I got introduced to other people, and, and I, I found more and more role models. I mean, my partner now at NVIDIA, I think, is one of the most brilliant leaders I've ever met. And he was a young guy, and, you know, he, he came about it the same way I do. He learned it, you know, and he, and he did it on the fly, and he did it by treating people well and just, you know, having a vision and, and, and trying it and moving forward. Um, so, you know, the, the people that are influential, some of them I could name, most of them are, are really just uh, impressions that I got along the way and I said to myself, I like that, that's impressive. And, and, and when I tend to say that to myself, I find myself trying to emulate that in some way. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today, Chris. Well, you're welcome. Thanks.